all right here we have a Kohler K241 it's upside down right now I want to show you I had to order a new crank uh, uh, connecting rod okay you see there's a new bolt I had a troll I dropped the bolt and I looked all over and I could not find it so I had to go get another one so I put a grade 8 bolt the same width and size I got it from O'Reilly's I'll show you in a bit now these holes right here are what connects it to the frame there's your oil pan right there your oil pan bolt I got a different oil pan uh, setup I put that comes straight across so I could drain it from here this I bought with a smaller uh, pulley system on it so this actually sits off of the tractor and this is a uh, the pulley right here and the PTO is the same so I got to come up with something else for this PTO but the connecting rod was broken in here so let's get this open right here and I can show you what I did I got to torque the connecting rod I just put it in there I cleaned everything really really good so I could go ahead and uh I am spinning it and spinning it and spinning it making sure nothing's gonna oh man nothing's gonna fall out of it nothing that all the interior gears are all together like I said this is a Kohler K241 I don't want to drop another one of these like I did before so the gremlins could get them although I got like I, I could only buy that in Kate packs of 10 Now there's a difference. That's a grade eight. Now these are not grade eights. That's a whole different one right there. This is a different one right here. See, it got three little ticks at the top, and that got like five or six ticks at the top. So this is a grade eight. It's a stronger bolt, but I still have the the torque specs for you. Let me get these out of the way right here, and I don't want to lose them, but I'm trying to hold the camera. All right, got these down right here. Gonna take the oil pan off right here. I brought. I just got a new gasket for it. Here's the oil pan washed out, cleaned out. This is all. All this oil in here is uh, fog, engine fog, because I fogged the engine. Now there's the new crank. I mean connecting rod I put in there. It's hidden on the bags on the bottom. I can move it around. That's a new connecting rod I put in there right there. Now this connecting rod and piston was a universal connecting rod. I want that to fall off my thing. That was a universal connecting rod. And let me, whoa, let me show you what I had to do. See if I get the light right here. This is whittled down right here because it's a universal connecting rod. I want to make sure it's not going to fall off my little bench, my makeshift. Sure all right this is the Kohler k241 this is the connecting rod that was broken on the engine the this would only spin halfway 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 this is the aftermarket connecting rod i had to file it down since it was the aftermarket connecting rod it was about this big sticking out of it okay so i had to file this down to sit in there but i just put it on i put fog and oil and I was just spinning it as fast as I can repeatedly to see if I heard anything moving anything and I did go with a flashlight and I looked in it and on not this end this end the cylinder hole bore is completely whole but this end the cylinder bore is cracked all right so you think oh my god how can he use it when you when the piston comes down it does not come down lower than the crack and these are known to have cracked cylinder bores from the factory they're known to have chips on the cylinder bores from the factory so we're gonna see if we could get this one up and running now let me show you the connecting rod this is the connecting rod that i pulled out of it right here this is see that's a little crack from the cylinder bore right there and that's the connecting rod i pulled out of it and let's see what else we got here these are the bolts I bought for the oil pan because I lost one of them. This is the only thing I didn't know. This right here. This was in the oil pan. All right. So this is the dipstick on the bottom of the rod. I think I threw the other piece away. But I had to cut. I measured it and I cut the other one. So I have the book right here. And the cap screw connecting rods for the K241 are. Uh, see here's two different things. The posi lock ones 
are 260 200 inch pounds the cap screw ones are 285 inch pounds okay the cylinder heads right here 25 to 30 foot pounds okay those are inch pounds and foot pounds for the spark plug man they just have inch pounds they don't got foot pounds and uh they have inch pounds not foot pounds okay heads 25 to 30 rod 260 inch pounds on the rod 260 inch pounds on the rod so this connecting rod right here is 260 inch pounds now let me tell you this about this connecting rod right here you think i'm crazy but where is that put tread locker on your connecting rod put tread locker on it you know why this broke off because apparently somebody fixed it before and i kid you not this is exactly how it was this connecting rod was in place that one was in place this connecting rod i mean this bolt was sitting in the oil pan this one was sitting in the oil pan this one was in place that means this one backed out by itself so put tread locker on it and we're looking at 260 inch pounds what's no actually this is a new one 260 inch pounds now another thing on this connecting rod that you're putting in this is the aftermarket one like i said i whittled it down this is the oil hole right here the oil hole faces the camshaft the oil hole faces the camshaft another thing with this oil hole that faces the camshaft when you disconnect it from the connecting rod before you put it on make sure the connecting rod is facing the same way at the top of the connecting rods there's little dimples they're facing the camshaft okay and then i'm going to show you a trick how i got the piston in i'm going to take these off right now all right there's the oil hole on the connecting rod there's the connecting rod and the oil hole faces the front okay i can see that it when it broke it's scratched up in here pretty good but it's a cast iron block so it should be pretty good so now i gotta get some tread locker on these before i put them in here this tread locker was four dollars the big one was uh thirty dollars all right 260 inch pounds 260 inch pounds is 22 or 21.6 foot pounds so i'm going with the foot pounds on this one right here all right i'm going to put this on tread locker on the treads i put that the lowest it goes is 25 so i'm going to put 25 right here at least i know it's 25 and i'm not going above it going back over here it says cap screw ones are 285 inch pounds posi lock screw 260 inch pounds the this right here 260 inch pounds rod 260 inch pounds 260 inch pounds i calculated with google was 21 point something so these are 25 i put 25 inch pounds on there okay i spun it and spun it and spun it for i came down here for three days after i put that on and i just spun it and spun it and spun it and spun it as much as i can to make sure there's nothing jingling nothing jangling nothing else that's loose in here i cleaned that all out really good and then that's the lubricated oil in that all right so now i'm going to put the screws back on the back of this all this should be good to go the tread locker is on there and it's torqued down this was the piece i had to file off see that's how long it came so this right here will bottom out on the oil pan so i had to measure it and cut it down cast iron oil pan oil pan aluminum cast iron sheet metal 35 foot pounds well now there's a problem right there i brought the wrong gasket i bought gas 0112 i saved kohler k241 wide base oil pan gasket all right so the wide base meant wider this way i thought it meant it gives me more room all the way around here to set it and it's the wrong gasket so o'reilly saved me again permatex ultra black gasket so i gotta put make my own gasket right now 
All right, see, you are lucky. You get the time lapse. I got pre. I'm gonna spray it on a cloth to wipe. I'm not spraying degreaser in the whole engine. That gotta be all clean. The prep, that gotta be all clean. You put a quarter inch bead on one side. So I'm probably gonna put it on the motor, stand the motor all the way up. But here's the thing. Uh, let dry for one hour, then tighten to torque specifications. Allow 24 hours to cure. It's Sunday, I was trying to get it running today. All right, so I got everything degreased and cleaned right here. Uh, I put it on a rag, old sock. It was a clean old sock. My wife says, what are you saving for? It's clean old sock. I degreased this and this. I didn't want to spray degreaser in here. I don't know if you knew this, but this cap right here, we can take it off. You can poke it. And now it's opened up. Ta -da -da -da. All right, so it says to put it on. Then uh, finger tighten so everything comes out. Then torque the specs. You know, on this, they should write on there the millimeter or the inch size that you need. Mine's is a thicker bead, so I'm probably going to go with this right here. All right. I even, might even go with a thicker bead than that. And also, I got to go real slow around it. You only put it on one side. You don't put it on both sides. And cut this in the half. Check. All right, that's the size bead I'm gonna go with right here. Sony guts. This oil pan, the hole in the oil pan where the that goes faces inside. It's closest to the oil pan hole, is closest to the uh that's heavy enough. That got stuff squeezing out as it is. Alright. Now to get the bolts, and it says tighten down by hand. Don't forget the high ones are your motor mounts, the low ones are the screw holes. Alexa, set a timer for one hour. There it is, the gasket's all the way around right now. This this came out this cast iron pan was heavy so it actually started to smash the gasket down already so i i can't torque it for an hour then i gotta let it sit overnight meanwhile i can start cleaning off this uh head get uh this cylinder head i'm gonna clean this off real good and then uh get that cleaned out really good while that's sitting there for the hour all right, I waited the hour and then torqued them down to 35 foot-pounds. You can see the bead came out a little bit. I freaking touched it with my arm right there. Tried to clean it up, but it's so super sticky. You cannot add ultra black gasket stuff. You cannot add any fluid for an hour, but it is still, it's not cured. So, but meanwhile, I am going to put this on. Now, this is the oil drain plug, but if you can see, it's in line with the rail, okay? But since this is a smaller pulley on it, this sits off the rail. So, it had this oil plug facing this way, and then another one coming in between, so you'd have to get under for the oil change. So, I'm putting this one all the way across. So I could do an oil change from the outside, although I have to put it in like this to make sure it's not going to hit the belt. No, actually the belt goes to the back, so the pulley it won't hit the belt. Although, uh, I know I could do this because this, sits, this doesn't sit on the frame, this sits off of the frame. So I'm putting some Teflon tape and now I know I'm going to have to put a little bit more oil and keep checking the oil because you figure this whole tube is going to be taking some of the two quarts of oil. 
All right, now that's my drain pipe for my oil now, so I could reach it without taking the uh, tractor off of the engine. This was came out to an S, and there was another S down here, and it was in the middle of the engine. This is as tight as can be, and this one is just a little bit tight. You can't take it off by hand, it won't fall off. This is bogged down in there pretty good. This is still tacky, so I'm not going to flip it over as bad as I want to flip it over and start putting everything else together. I have to let it set it and forget it. Okay, so the belt goes around here that way. This is not in the way of that. The PTO belt is right here. So it's not in the way of the PTO belt right there. And this isn't the original one for this 10 horsepower Kohler. Although... I may put it, but it's still, the belt goes the other way and the PTO is further out this way. All right. I put a little piece of wood in there with, and that gasket's going to get hard. So this way, there's no weight, there's no pressure, there's no tension. You're saying wood, well, the oil is, wood ain't going to catch fire till about at least over 300 degrees. And this gets about 240 to 250 degrees inside the oil. So that should be okay. And then now I got to set it and forget it i'll probably put the starter on it right now since i'm i have time